Shepard of a soul, Shepard of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's side. Entrance into your world, give it light and understanding to your to simple. Father Lord, let your world this morning, my Lord, my Father, that the Lord let it illuminate our life this morning in the name of Jesus. That mm. and the end, and then be glorified and magnified in Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Children of God, the brief word of exhortation that we have this morning by the grace of Almighty God is titled Sanctification. It's titled Sanctification. Sanctification. And somebody may ask, I know all of us will know, somebody who do not want to ask what is sanctification. Sanctification, in a nutshell, means to be set apart for special use or purpose. That is, to be made, to be set apart for a holy use. To be set apart for a holy use, for a special use, for a special purpose. And the Bible made us to understand in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 3 to 5, that it is the will of God for us to be sanctified. It's in that book of First Thessalonians 4, from verse 3. The Bible says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his or her own body in holiness and honor. Five, not in the passion of lust, like Gentiles who do not know God. Sanctification is what is demanded from every child of God. It's not for everybody. It's, it's what the Bible said there. Even though we know that everybody is created by God, but not today, not everybody is child of God. Satan has taken hold or captivity of so many. That is why the Bible said in that uh, verse 5, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles, because the Gentiles, they don't know God. We who have been sanctified, who have known God, this is required of us for us to set ourselves as part, for us to run away, for us to abstain anything that is unholy, anything that is corrupt, anything that is dirty before the eye of our God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 30, Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, which we are going to take as a foundational text this morning. Book of Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, it said, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live, that you may live. So sanctification is the work of God's spirit dwelling in the heart. But how does God's spirit do this? How does the spirit of God do this? Come with me to the book of Romans. 
We will see how the Spirit of God does the sanctification. Book of Romans chapter 7. If you can hear me, shout hallelujah. 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 Book of Romans chapter 7, I read from verse 21 to 25. Book of Romans chapter 7, 20, 21, it says, So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. 22. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. 23. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of the mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? 25. Say, thanks be to God through Jesus our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind. But with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. So, child of God, by turning our eye, the eye of a believer, remember the Bible said, and where we read before, it said, it is required of what? Of children of God. That is in the first Thessalonians. It's not for everybody. It's not for the Gentiles. But for we, the believer, I mean the, men, the true converts, by turning our eye to the loving, to the living Savior. Child of God, you can remember when you were converted, I mean genuine converts. You can remember, if you throw your mind back, you will remember when you were converted. It was the work of God's Spirit. He turned away your eyes to Jesus dying upon the cross for sinners. And he showed you how willing he was to save you. That is exactly what drove you. That is the driving force that brought you before him. That brought you before him. That's the driving force. That is what brings us before him. In the book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 8, the Bible said there, he said, keep my status and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I am the Lord who, who does the sanctification. Keep my law and live. I am the one through my mercy that sanctified you. So it is obligatory. It is mandatory to every child of God. To every child of God. For us to abstain. For us to run away from everything that is unholy. That everything that is what? That is corrupt. That is the expectation of God over the life of his children. And in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel number 36 verse 26, the Bible again said, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you what? A heart of flesh. I will remove. I will remove. When we are being sanctified, that heart, that the, the way and manner we used to do before, our old self will be dropped. We begin to see ourselves operate in a new heart. Every heart of stone, every heart that has been in enmity with the word of God, every heart that has been in enmity with the things of God will be rolled away. That is when we are sanctified. In the same way, when the Spirit of God sanctifies, He turns our eyes to Jesus. It is only when the sanctification takes place that you begin to know, begin to know where to focus your attention. You begin to know what you are supposed to see as a priority. Like Apostle Mali said, a lot of people go to markets for different purposes. But when you are being sanctified, you begin to know, you know, you begin to know how to draw your scale of preference. What, what is that that is supposed to take the uppermost part in my life? You can only know that when you are sanctified. When you are sanctified, you now begin to look. You now begin to focus your eyes onto Jesus. According to Hebrew chapter 12. Hebrew chapter 12. Hebrew chapter 12. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you can hear me, I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 2. 
He said, look into Jesus. Oh, no, let me read from, from verse 1 anyway. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which claims so closely. When you are being sanctified, you now begin to say there is no need to cling to this. You begin to see you know, sin as something that is disgusting. Everything that is unholy, everything that is unworthy, everything that is dirty begins to you know you begin to see them you know as abomination, as a taboo. Then you know verse two. Then looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You now begin to look unto him, begin to set aside every side distraction, everything that has been making you a busy body. We begin to look unto Jesus when you have been sanctified as a true convert, as a true believer. You begin to look unto Jesus, begin to watch him. He is the one who took up our shame, who died in our place. You begin to look unto him because he is our role model. You no longer begin, you can't can begin to use your friend as a role model. After all, such a so person did it. After all, such a so person did that. What about me? Such a so church did it. Why can't we? Mm -hmm. You begin to look unto Jesus. Can Jesus do this? Can he say this? Can he be in this place? You begin to look unto him. Apostle Paul did not ask. Remember where we, ask, where we read in that book of the Solidarity? Listen, he did not ask, What will do what? What will save me? No, he did not ask. There is no what that can deliver us. There is no what that can do what? In that book of Romans, well, if, you, if you follow it very well, there is no what that can deliver man at all. Mm -hmm. But there is who. Who will deliver me? A wretched sinner. A wretched man like this. He said who? When you said who, it means a living thing. In other ways, your knowledge do not do what? Do the deliverer. It will save you on the last day. How many degrees that you have will not save you? How many properties that you have will not save you? You have a jet. It will not save you. What will save you is who is a living thing. And what is that living? It is our loving Savior. Who can do that work? That saving. Praise Allah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only God. That is why God said, who will save me? He did not say what will save me. A lot of people today, so God prophesied the Christians, believe in their knowledge. Believe in what they have. Believe in their achievements. But that cannot save us. Mm -hmm. The only who can save us, the only one who can save us is what is our loving Savior. That is why he said, in conclusion of that, uh, of that Romans, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why he, the moment he realized, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ because he is the only one who can do the saving for me. What I acquired in this world cannot save me. Whom I know cannot save me. What who can save me is the only Savior that gave his life for me. He's the only one who can save me. When the sanctification comes, now we begin to see ourselves. It does not matter. People may think that you are crazy. Look at the way you think. Look at the way you look now. But you know whom you are looking onto. You know whom you are a role model. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. What he said? He said, blessed are the pure in heart. When you are sanctified, you are pure in heart. What is your joy? Because you know, I will see God. That is the joy that is carrying you. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. The same truth is being told, is being revealed in the book of 1 Corinthians. I have time, we can go there. We can go there. 1 Corinthians, praise Allah somebody. 1 Corinthians Hallelujah. chapter 1, verse 30 to 31. 1 Corinthians. He said, and because of him, you 
are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God. So Jesus Christ is a wisdom for us from God. He is the righteousness and sanctification and redemption as well. That one. So that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. We should not boast as Gentiles boast. People boast, you know, because of, you know, the degree they have. A lot of so-called men of God boast of the, because of the gigantic church they have. People boast because of their bank account. People boast because of the kind of car they drive. People boast. My son is so, so, occupies so, so position. But the Bible is telling us, our boasting should be in the Lord. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my God and my God knows me. I know that I will see him on the last day. That is our boasting. As people who have been sanctified, as people who have, who have dropped our old self, we are in Christ and he is in us. We have no wisdom, but Christ is our wisdom. We have no righteousness, but Christ is our righteousness as free as the sunshine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. In ourselves, but Christ is our sanctification and redemption. He is what? Our sanctification and what? Our redemption. Hebrew number 12, 14. It says something very peculiar. If you can go, if you can turn with me. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. And it says, now I read here, strive for peace. Like the man of God already tells us, strive for peace with everyone. Our enemies, yes, we have enemies. They may not wish you well, but when we are sanctified, we pray for them. He says, strive for peace with everyone and for holiness, without which no one can see what can see the Lord. When we are sanctified, we cannot because ah, this brother did me this. I am going to return it back. This is the says to me. I am going to give her back. We know we all do other things when we are not sanctified, when we are still in our own self, when we do not know whom we are. Uh, you did listen to me. I will tell you. I will show you. You uh -huh. never know me. Do you know who I am? But when we are sanctified, the Bible says, strive. Do everything within your age. Be in peace with everyone. Oh, sister, it's okay. It's okay. God bless you. I will. Oh, thank you. May God bless you. I didn't mean it enough for bad. But if I offend you, I am sorry. Even when you are the one that is being wronged, Mm -hmm. Try to be in peace with everyone. Don't let anyone take away your holiness. The Bible said, without that, it does not matter anything we do in the house of God. It does not matter what we think that we are doing best more than another person. He said, without holiness, no one can see God. So the, the only ticket with which we can be able to have access oh, to the throne that we are struggling for is when we keep ourselves holy. It's when we look unto Him. So the moment you sincerely accept Christ, you we you were made one with Christ. Christ died, and we died in Him. Christ lives, and we live in Him. We you, we we supposed to reckon ourselves dead unto sin and risen with Christ. We are supposed to put on Christ. Let him live in us. We need to commune with him. Love him. Abide in him. And sin, we do what? We fall off from us. When we abide, when we commune, when we live, when we let him live in us, when we love him, sin, we, we will not have any place to dwell. He will run away from us. You see, the soul, I conclude with this. Praise the Lord. The soul Christ in him is, is what is emancipated. What am I trying to say? It is set free. First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. 
First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. I'll submit with this. Because of time, First Peter 1, 15 to 16, what does it say? It said, but as he who called you is holy, as he who called me for is holy, we also be holy in all our conduct. The Bible is very clear. It didn't say on this area. It didn't say until we come upon the mountain. No. It said in all our conduct, like the apostle led us yesterday, even in our secrets. I listened to a, a message of one woman of God in those days. She said that she judged, you know, her member's Christianity from what anyone can do when you are in your sitting room or your bedroom when nobody is looking at you. That is where our Christianity comes. Because a lot of people know how to do what else to camouflage. But what, what we do in privacy counts a lot. Even though human beings cannot see or physically, but there is an eye that the Bible says he neither sleep nor slumber. He sees us. He sees us. So that is what matters. He said, but as he who called you and me is holy, we all need to be holy in our conduct. Since it is written, ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to sanctified. We need to do everything humanly possible to run away to anything that will bring us into the mud which the mercy and the blood of Jesus Christ have brought us out and washed us. We have been sanctified. We have been put aside. Remember, the definition that we get to sanctification is people that who have been set aside for a special purpose, for a holy use. Christ has sanctified us so that because he knows we are the one that will carry him. He said our body is his temple. We are his witnesses. Because we have been sanctified, because we have been set aside, we need to do what? Separate ourselves. We need to abstain. We need to run away from immorality. We need to run away from anything corrupt. We need to run away from anything that is dirty. We need to run away that anything that God will say and he will call his away his eyes. The Bible said, my heart is not short that I will not be able to deliver. Neither my ear closed that I cannot hear. But there is something that stands in between. And what is that in? Iniquity. Sin. When we are sanctified, we need to work holy. Because the Bible said in the book of First Peter that way, that the God, that our role model, the Bible said he is holy. And we need to be holy. And we need to run away from anything corrupt, anything smelly, anything that can grieve his spirit in us. And as we do that, God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother, I want us to this, take this prayer point. I want us to ask God, Lord, every stony heart in me, even though I have confessed you, but any stony heart in me that is still adamant to your word, that does not want you to break me down and remove me, mm. Lord, according to your word this morning, let every stony heart be rolled away out of my life in the name of Jesus. And let the heart of flesh take over control. Oh, we are not able to ask God right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the let's let's take this one as as that Ezekiel said he said I will give you a new heart and a new spirit and I will put and I will remove that stony heart and I will put my spirit within you. I will put my spirit within you. I'm going to ask God. You see, Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. When he's there, he doesn't want anything that will grieve him. The moment we grieve him, he will just do what? He will just go by the one, by one side, JJ. We're going to ask God. 
Lord, you are so about to make me to grieve your spirit in me. Father, deliver me from that in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, to make me to grieve your spirit, my Lord, my Father, deliver me from that in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from that in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus, the mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus, my name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we adore you. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, for the love that you have for us. Amen. Out of all your creations, my Lord and my God, Lord, you choose us as the people that you have set aside. Mm. As the people that you have called for your special use. Mm. What an invitation. What a privilege. My Lord and my Father, we pray this morning. That this year called upon us, that the work that, that you have done unto us, Lord Jesus, we will not take it for granted. Whatever mm-hmm. that has been making us, my Lord and my Father, to dance one step forward and three steps backwards, Father, deliver us from that in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Help us to stand, my Lord and my Father. Yes, Lord, as you have cleansed us, my Lord and my Father, give us the grace, my Lord and my Father, to continue to stand on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lord, this morning, Lord Jesus, Abba Father. That the Lord, it will not condemn me, my Lord, my Father. Neither your children who have had it, Lord Jesus. That I'm king of all glory. Let it prepare us that on the last day we shall be rapturable before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Let's be a whole mighty name. For in oh. Jesus' mighty, precious, and glorious name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The Lord. Praise. Ah, hallelujah. Praise, Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, there is no better way to explain this. The Lord has explained to us this morning what it takes to be sanctified and what we should do when you are sanctified to remain sanctified for Him. And I pray the Lord will help us, help the, the, the teacher this morning, and help every one of all the students who have heard the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, for you to be sanctified, you must be born again. You cannot be in the world and be sanctified. It's not possible. You must be enrolled into the school of the Holy Spirit, into the, into the school of those who are running the race to heaven. If you are out there, you're not born again. No matter how you pray, you are only wasting your time. You are the one the Bible is saying we should run away from so that you will not pollute us. So therefore, if you want to come out of that pollution, Come on, leave that pollution away and stop being a pollutant. Speak this word after me. Speak Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I've seen how you want your children to live and to be for you. Father, I want to be like them. But this I cannot because I'm still in the far country of sin and in iniquity. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sin. Purge me from every iniquity. I renounce the devil and all his works this morning. Take my name away from the book of death and write it in the book of life. I receive power today of sanctification to go and sin no more. I am now born again because the Lord Jesus Christ is now my Lord and personal Savior. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Thank you, Almighty God, for sending your word my way. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for dying to sanctify me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me ears to hear this word and the heart to do. In Jesus' name, Amen. We have declared this declaration. The saints in the house are all rejoicing right now with you. The Lord Jesus Christ is celebrating the holy angels in heaven. They are jumping up and down, singing hallelujah for your salvation. 
And I know the preacher, the teacher this morning is also happy that the Lord have used him to win another soul again. And I pray the joy you have brought to the mountain this morning, the joy you have brought to heaven, will remain strong, remain joyous forever. And this joy will never brought shame again in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace mm -hmm. to remain sanctified, receive it now. The grace to remain in the race, you will never look back and go back again to your dustbin that you came out from. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I pray the teacher, the Lord, the Lord I give you this morning, whatever stand that the devil is looking at, saying, You that is preaching now, I will deal with you on that day. But uh, let us stay be washed away so that this will not be used against him. And we that have heard the word, and it's in our lives, Almighty God washes away. So that the last day we all shall be qualified to enter into the rest of God forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.